path of patients with chronic heart failure will continue to progress and develop persistently severe symptoms despite maximum guideline directed medical therapy. In 2018, the European Society of Cardiology updated its definition of advanced heart failure, which includes four distinct criteria. Severe and persistent symptoms in heart failure, severe cardiac dysfunction, hospitalizations or unplanned visits in the past 12 months, severe impairment or exercise capacity with inability to exercise or low six-minute walk test distance. The recommendations described for patients with symptomatic heart failure remain but are not sufficient. Hyponatremia and diuretic refractory congestion is common in advanced heart failure and is associated with poor outcomes. Improvement in hyponatremia improve clinical outcomes. Fluid restriction is commonly prescribed for these patients, but it only improves hyponatremia modestly. Despite improving hemodynamic compromise, positive inotropic agents do improve survival patients in either the hospital or the outpatient setting. To minimize adverse effects, lower doses of inotropic drugs are preferred. Also, the development of tachyphylaxis should be acknowledged and the choice of agent may need to be changed during longer periods of support. Mechanical circulatory support is a therapeutic option for patients with advanced heart failure restricted ejection fraction to prolong life and improve functional capacity. Cardiac transplantation provides a mortality and morbidity benefit only to selected patients. Multi-organ transplantation is uncommon and reserved for highly selected candidates. Detailed information on the management of patients with heart failure can be found in the guideline presented at the very beginning of my talk, which is in the public domain. I personally have a lot of complaints about this document, but I will focus on them in the next video.